Um, hello, my name is Bhargav Vyas, and today I'm going to be talking about the effect of the spread of information on the internet. So, the internet is a relatively recent invention, and its effects are just now being unearthed. This interested me and led me to ask the question, how has the rise of the internet positively or negatively affected the spread of information among the teenage and young adult populations within the United States? So, an oversimplified answer to this question would be that the rise of the internet has positively affected the spread of information in two major ways. One, by enlightening users of recent events, um, by keeping them up to date with the society around them. And number two, by increasing political awareness. By being knowledgeable about the recent events, people will be more likely to stand up for injustices, therefore increasing the political awareness. For example, we'll take this quote by Bill Gates. Um, this quote says, that the spread of information on the internet is a positive because it helps users donate to charities and helps charities um, spread their influence throughout the world and the population. Um, this helps um, charities and people all over the world because, because, it, um, because, because it improves the lives of many people. Furthermore, spreading information on the internet about other things such as news, events, and recent laws that have been passed serves for an even greater societal impact. Now more than ever, will information be spread quickly throughout the internet? For example, according to Brian Chen, a technological author, 5G allows information to be shared at speeds that have never been seen before. For example, people can now share movies within seconds. This would lead the world to look something like this picture shown in the screen. Um, where the entire world is interconnected and all people are globally interconnected with one another. This means that people all over the world will be more knowledgeable on world events. And so, if, an, if for example, if an injustice happens in, let's say, a third world country, then people in a first world country, like the United States, could stand up and protest against that injustice. This leads me to my next point. These two pictures show the, the great difference in social justice protests during the pre- and post-internet eras. The picture on the left shows an anti-segregation protest, and the picture on the right shows an environmental justice protest. Now, although both of these protests are equally significant, and it, it is clearly shown that the more recent protest has a lot more people, this can be correlated to the internet's ability to quickly spread information and unite millions of people within seconds. The internet's ability to increase political awareness also has a massive worldwide effect. For example, according to political scientist Walter Frisch, the internet connectivity positively correlates with democracy at high levels of significance. This means that people in authoritarian countries may be uneducated in, dem in democratic ideals. However, when, when um, an internet user from a democratic country shares information online and promotes democracy, someone in an authoritarian country may be able to see this information and become educated in the, in the ideals of democracy. And this may cause them to start some sort of a change in their own country, which would improve the lives of not only themselves, but many other people. However, despite there being numerous positives to the spread of information on the internet, some skeptics may believe that the rise of the internet has negatively affected the spread of information by increasing exposure to misinformation, which is detrimental to the values and beliefs of many people, and by increasing the cybersecurity risk, which negatively, which um, could risk users' information and privacy. One valid argument is um, the spread of misinformation. Set, for example, according to the Mozilla Advocacy Team a survey, 77% of respondents were very or extremely concerned about online misinformation. This shows that, the, the, that their concern is very valid and widespread. However, these same doubters also said that the, that platforms are, um, that the platforms with information are best equipped to solve the misinformation problem and the education and tools should be used to tackle misinformation. Luckily, according to a study done by the Pew Research, um, many researchers are now developing um, misinformation and fact-checking programs, which not only educate users on how to um, spot misinformation on the websites they visit, but these fact-check programs also indicate to users um, the validity of certain information that they see. So this means that doubters will have nothing to fear about as misinformation may be a thing in the past in the near future. Another valid argument against the, the spread of misinformation currently is cybersecurity risk. 
Currently, this is valid, but researchers, researchers such as Nashina Tariq have recently invent, invented a program called blockchain. Blockchain, according to Nashina Tariq, is a program that significantly decreases the risk of hackers and cyber criminals accessing valuable information by, for example, as seen in this picture, um, blockchain directly takes the customer to the service provider, therefore eliminating the need of there being a middleman. This ensures that cyber criminals cannot interfere with this middleman and steal valuable data. In conclusion, although there may be some negative setbacks to spread of information on the internet, the positives still outweigh these temporary negatives. It is important to note that users still carefully consider should still carefully consider all the information they view on the internet, but we must continue to promote the spread of in important information in order to live in a better world. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I do have two questions for you. Uh, first question. First question I have is, uh, what evidence did you gather that you didn't use, and then why didn't you use it? Um, this is an interesting question because um, in my anti-bibliography, I actually gathered eight sources and I only used about five. And one of the, one of like the big sources I didn't use was um, one by Vince Cerf. He was the guy who co-created the internet. And um, so obviously this would be a very um, credible source, but I didn't use it because of a couple major reasons. One was it was pretty short. It was only like an introduction of like the um of like the topic and number two it it mainly talked about like um how misinformation negatively affects people whereas mine was um how misinformation will be solved that was one of my points so it didn't really work with my whole thing but it was still an interesting thing to read okay and then one last question for you what advice would you have for other researchers who would consider doing this as a topic um, one major piece of advice I would have for people trying to research on this topic would be to get a really good insight on like the background of the topic first, because you can't really argue whether or not something is positive or negative without fully understanding how it will work first. So I would say that you need to first um, learn how information is spread, like what actually happens when you press that send button, like where does it go, um, how does it reach the other person, and who can interfere with that. So once they learn about that, it would, uh, it would be experienced enough to then um, formulate a standpoint after some additional research about the topic. All right. Thank you.